We're going to talk about all of this and more with our friend there at 24 site, Tom Lobianco. He joins me. Uh, Tom, thanks for being with us. Hope you had a good uh, Fourth of July weekend and happy Monday here. There's so much to get to, uh, and, and let's get to it. You know, um, in the interim, when Rebecca Castor filed that report, uh, a sixth House Democrat called on Biden to step aside. Uh, that was Adam Smith, the Democrat from Washington State. He's also the ranking member on House Armed Services uh, as well. And, and we're getting so many of these statements in from members on Capitol Hill, uh, President Biden right now is meeting virtually with the Congressional Black Caucus, Tom. That, that's happening as we speak. Um, and I just want to go over from some of the statements we've gotten in from uh, Democratic senators. Remember, Tom, on Friday there was this report in the Washington Post that said Mark Warner was convening uh, so many of his Democratic colleagues there in the Senate to talk about the path going forward, uh, whether or not Biden is viable. Warner says this in a statement today. He says, with so much at stake in the upcoming election, now is the time for conversations about the strongest path forward. He says, as these conversations continue, I believe it's incumbent upon the president to more aggressively make his case to the American people and to hear directly from a broader group of voices about how to best prevent Trump's lawlessness from returning to the White House. Martin Heinrich from New Mexico, Tom says, I love Joe Biden. However, what I care most about is the preservation of our democracy. Biden needs to continue to demonstrate that his debate performance was just a bad night and that he has a clear path to defeating Donald Trump. Our democracy hangs in the balance. So almost every statement from Senate Democrats, uh, I'm not talking about House Democrats, Tom, is we love Joe Biden, Joe Biden is our guy, we want Joe Biden to be the nominee, but, with the caveat, he has to demonstrate that he is still up to the job, up to the task. Do you see that theme forming today? Yeah, I mean, I mean, coming back in after the Fourth of July break, which you know, as we as we just opened with, for for those of us in the middle of this thing, it was not very much a, a break. Uh, for for good normal folks at home, thank God you got a break. Um, <laughs> you know, look, the, coming back into it, the first full week back at work for uh, for Congress in particular. It coming back in, these folks were back in their districts listening to voters, especially right after the Biden debate performance. So they're processing everything. So you do you do see a couple of themes coming out of this. Number one, there does seem to be a mixture of uh, uh, Democrats who are in potentially vulnerable races uh, backing away. This goes um, uh, with the, uh, the, uh, the congressman up in Maine, Democrat in Maine, uh, congresswoman from Washington, who very early came out and said that they would not support Biden uh, after his debate performance. Um, the hedging that you see here from uh, Senator Warner in particular, but also um, uh, Senator Heinrich, um, I, I laughed earlier because that is kind of indicative of a, you know, as they say in legislative terms, the upper chamber where you're elected to six year uh, terms and you don't have to go for re-election every two years. Um, it's kind of standard for a hedge uh, for senators, um, but you can see them leaving the door open for Biden to salvage this. And as you noted here, the Congressional Black Caucus, that's going to be really big. That's going to be very important. You know, if Jim Clyburn walks out of there and says, all right, hey, you know what? We're not with Biden anymore. That's probably it. But if he walks out and says, hey, time to get back in line. And Clyburn was the one who saved him in 2020. Uh, Biden has always leaned heavily. Uh, Cedric Richmond, he poached from the Congressional Black Caucus to come to the White House and work for him. So that's, a, that's going to be the big tell okay. coming out of this. You know, um, Tom, also, we just got in a statement from uh, Senator Patty Murray there, the pro tem of the Senate uh, from Washington State. Uh, she says this, we need to see a much more forceful and energetic candidate on the campaign. She says Biden must seriously consider the best way to preserve his incredible legacy and secure it for the future. You know, aside from these six House Democrats, Tom, um, mm -hmm. the House picture looks I would argue, and maybe you would argue, uh, drastically different. I mean, we've heard full-throated declarative endorsements from so yes. many House Democrats, Hakeem Jeffries and others yeah. today. 
uh, saying that, you know, Biden's the nominee, he's not going anywhere, and we're still behind him, of course. Um, we have to wait and see what comes of the CBC meeting that's happening right now. Mm -hmm. Although a senior House Democratic leadership source today to Chad Pergram there at Fox says Biden won't meet tomorrow with House Democrats um, or this week. Uh, when asked why, the source had this, quote, because he doesn't want to meet with people who will tell him what he doesn't want to hear. So I thought that was really interesting. You have these kind of wow. uh, meta discourses going on yes. above <laughs> ground, above ground. Everyone is sticking behind Biden, except these six House Democrats and others. Below ground, you know, it's different. Yeah. There's a lot of hedging going on, Tom. And, and, and we can talk about what Biden did this morning by sending out that letter to House Democrats yes. saying enough, essentially, I'm paraphrasing, say we got to move on from this. We got to move on from my debate performance. And then he called into Morning Joe. Did you get mm. Trump vibes from any of those decisions yes. today? Yes. Yes, very. Yes. OK, so friends, check out. Go, uh, uh, come sign up for our news, 24site.news uh, is the number 24SIGHT. Uh, dot news, and this is literally what I'm writing for tomorrow's newsletter, our 24-7 newsletter, uh, the Trumpification of Biden, this role reversal. I've been thinking about this for a couple of days, texting with a few folks about this. Uh, and Andrew, I got to tell you, your, uh, your instincts on this are right on the money. Andrew, you're the first one that I heard suggest maybe Biden will not be the nominee. And this was, you know, even months before uh, that debate performance. So your, your forecasting is impeccable. Um, <laughs> look, you know, Biden comes out after the Supreme Court decision wearing bronzer, which is a, a, obviously a Trump signature. He's attacking institutions, even though he's a member He's a leader of these institutions. That is very Trumpy. Uh, he's saying, get in line uh, or get the heck out of here. Again, very Trumpy. Now, this could either be four dimensional chess that's being played here, or it could be the last bastion of somebody who's about to drop out. And that's what we have to watch for in this. And the key determinant is what I've been texting with, with some folks today in particular about is okay, if you're Trump, Clearly, that style of politicking, which he has honed, works on the American right. Does it translate, however, to Democrats and the American left? And I don't know that it does. I mean, this what's so strange about this is that it's all very new for Biden. Uh, it, it could be Hail Mary, or it could be very strategic. We just don't know yet. But yes, Trumpy, Trumpy Biden. This is a just take the, the blonde wig and put it on top of dark branding. All right. <laughs> well, okay. So Tom, he also had a call today with the Biden National Finance Committee. Democratic donors were on that call. The takeaway at the end, uh, according to sources to Fox, was he's not going anywhere. Uh, POTUS said people need to quote stop questioning him. Uh, to your point, you know the language is. It was so Trumpian. He, he is saying in both the ABC interview on Friday and, and this call in on Morning Joe and MSNBC today that he alone can fix it, meaning, i.e., he alone can beat Donald Trump. That has been his line throughout the course of this post debate yes. fallout. So I thought it was just so interesting there, the parallels. I want to put up one of the quotes uh, from Eli Stokel's <laughs> quoting the interview from Biden today. He says, It drives me nuts. People are talking about this asserting he's been out <laughs> since the debate, testing myself by speaking with people. He says, where the hell has Trump been? Uh, and, and, you know, we're going to get into all of the medical questions and considerations that mm -hmm. uh, were brought forth today at the White House press briefing after some of these reports surfaced that, you know, White House visitor logs showed uh, some of these mm, neurologists yes. from Walter Reed uh, coming to the White House um, and Karine Jean-Pierre got into it, really, with some of the reporters there in the briefing room. We'll get to that a, a bit later. Um, mm -hmm. While we have you, Tom, though, um, of course, we're a week away from the RNC. You guys over yes. there at 24 site, you're headed to Milwaukee. We have a live picture there uh, over a gorgeous Milwaukee skyline yes. uh, on this Monday night. It begins one week from today. Uh, from my understanding, the RNC platform committee today, Tom, adopted mm -hmm. the platform. Uh, this was somewhat controversial. Why? 
Yeah, a couple of things. I mean, this is the really the first time. Normally, we don't pay an awful lot of attention to platforms, to party platforms, because it's kind of assumed that you already know where the Democrats stand, you already know where the Republicans stand. And of course, that all got flipped on its head eight years ago. This is really the first time that the Republican Party, under Donald Trump's more or less total control, has actually crafted a policy vision are built around Trump nationalist populism. And I mean, right down to the point where the Trump campaign puts out uh, the, the bullet points on this, and they're very vague, it's 20 bullet points, you know, things are gonna be better, we're gonna make everything great, it's gonna be a great success. Doesn't get into an awful lot of detail. Now, the, the main fight going into this was between the movement conservatives and pro-life conservatives and the Trump campaign and the RNC uh, orthodoxy over whether you lean into abortion in the platform, as used to be the case. And in this case, they decided to pull away from it and go for a let the states decide uh, on how to handle it. And this is one of the key fractures inside the RNC and inside the party right now. And what you have, especially with the way the Trump campaign rolled it out today, uh, with this, you know, targetedly coming out about an hour or so before the platform, or after the platform committee votes, and then the formal release of what will be, ultimately this will be voted on by the full convention um, when that happens, and, and it will more than likely 99.9% .9 chance that this passes. Um, okay. This is the Trump vision for the party I see. right now. It's the statement of policies. Yeah. Um just from our own Paul Steinhauser there at Fox Digital, he says this, a Republican source in the room in Milwaukee today during the platform vote telling Fox it was 84 to 18 to approve the slim down document. The 18 delegates who voted against the platform opposed it because there was no plank in support of a federal constitutional ban on abortion. So I thought that was very interesting. Uh, lastly, Tom, we know uh, Trump is holding a rally tomorrow in Doral, Florida. Uh, his home state. Uh, we also know Marco Rubio is going to be there. Does that send your beep stakes <laughs> alarms tingling, so to speak? Uh, we're going to get that yeah. news pretty soon, aren't we? Very soon, very soon. Uh, I mean, look, dr drop dead deadline on that is probably Wednesday of next week. Okay. Um, I saw ABC report that we should have an answer by Monday. But, you know, really in the next coming days, we should know better. Well, you know, still Vance, still Bergham, definitely Rubio. Haven't heard a lot about Carson, okay. Cotton, Tim Scott recently. They seem to have kind of petered away. Okay. Um, Coming up very soon. All yes. right. <laughs> All your Veep Stakes reporting will uh, finally have an answer very, very soon. Tom LoBianco <laughs> with 24 Sight. Thanks so much, Tom. Talk soon. Thank you, Andrew.